Hey, Juan here. Let's talk about four technologies that you should be paying attention to as a product manager in 2023. Number uno, low code or no code tools. These are going to be really important for you to pay attention and to start using it. If you have not used them, just imagine the possibility of you potentially starting to be able to create some kind of mock-up product or prototype that users actually can use and get results. This is awesome, especially if you think from the point of view of validating problems, of validating solutions, of understanding better what the users need and not having to go into a development process that is not that the engineers are going to be fast or not. It's going to be a process, meaning that it's going to require time for you to develop and to plan. It's going to require time from the product designer to actually plan and come with up some designs and actually then the engineers to understand those ones, coordinate, execute them, and then build the product to release. Usually it's going to take a little bit longer time than if you are able to use some kind of node code tool where you can quickly work in maybe with your designer to build that quick prototype that you could just throw in to your customers or your potential customers to test if this is something that they could use. You can do this in a small groups and you don't have to release to everybody, but no code tools are getting more powerful. So you can actually build your product on top of those no code tools. And then you can integrate with other areas where you are actually using coding to develop your product. Something to pay attention, something that you really have to start investigating. And this is great for you as a product manager or as a product designer, because you actually can do something without always having to depend on the engineers to build a prototype. And the engineers then can be working or planning what the product is going to be or building some other areas of the product while you are actually trying to validate those problems and solutions with the customers. Probably one of the most famous no-code tools is Bubble.io. Some of them, you actually also can add code to those no-code tools to actually beef them up and make them do more clever things. Does this mean that this is the end of software engineering? Probably not, probably not in a while, but in reality, the, what is going to happen is that it's going to get more and more easy to produce working products without having to know product development or engi software engineering. Numero dos, blockchain or distributed ledger technology. This is something that is very important and it has been coming for many years. I think that uh, the early days of Bitcoin were back in 2009, if I'm correct. It was somehow linked to the crisis that happened in 2008 and all the problems that were with the banks. They wanted to create an independent currency. Very important, very, very interesting uh, technology that is going to help you do certification processes and make sure that you are able to add traceability to, for example, different information that is stored in those databases. In the end, basically what blockchain is, is like a database where you add all the traceability and all the certification that is done in a, let's say, independent way or semi-independent way because you might control all the nodes in the blockchain. The benefit of blockchain is that you can create more secure, reliable and traceable supply chains where you, for example, can see the steps of a fabrication or a certification process. Think about education, think about building parts or manufacturing parts for whatever, houses, cars, furniture. You will be able to trace all the objects and see where in which stages they are and see if all the quality controls have been passed. Something that at this point is pretty much impossible to do. And this, of course, opens the possibility for new business models where you could create smart contracts that are contracts that in the moment that part of that supply chain, for example, it's actually validated or certified the payment will happen automatically. For example, I can say that, hey, I my blockchain is just following and tracking the production of certain pieces. Those pieces have been now delivered to an assembly site, which is a different company. In the moment that those ones are delivered, the contract triggers, the payment happens, and you're potentially removing middle people that are taking cuts that are probably not that beneficial in the whole process. Numero tres. Artificial intelligence and machine learning. 
you probably have heard about ChatGPT because everybody has seems to have heard about it and it's appearing even in the news nowadays. Everybody seems to be worried about how AI is going to take over the world and it's going to take over all of our jobs. I think that in reality, what Ch with ChatGPT and other AI tools or machine learning tools, what they're going to do is that they're going to make much easier certain parts of the work that used to be more tedious and you can take the advantage of using these tools now to help you do that part of the product development or the product management for yourself. This applies to all the parts of the process. It applies to the whole product development process. And what you have to focus as a product manager or as a product per people or a product creation pe person or product development person is that you have to look into how these tools are going to help you do your job. That's one. But also how these tools are going to give better experience to your users. Many people have been doing that already because of course you have it in YouTube. You have the algorithms to do the recommendations. That's just basically some kind of AI or machine learning. All the recommendation systems that you see, AI base or some kind of AI base. But in general, what you can focus is that how are you going to get a better experience for your users? And also how you are going to make your job easily or easier by using and um, leveraging these tools. So you could think, for example, there are many tools or many things that you are going to do in your product that's already been done. If you're going to do an e-commerce portal or if you're going to do a subscription model, you can just go and ask GPT that, hey, I need to do this. I need to do an IAM. You can just go to ChatGPT and start asking that, hey, how would you do the feature specifications? How you break down this feature into all the tasks that needs to be done? You can do that because this has been done many times. Once you get it done, once you get the template or the basic process from ChatGPT, then you can go and start tweaking and start making sure that it's covering all the points and all the tasks that you think that had to be done for that are unique for your product. This is going to save you a lot of time. This is going to be extremely beneficial. Don't be afraid of these tools. Just learn how to use them. Then you will find the potential. And most probably you're going to do a much better job than you're doing right now. Number four, the race of AR, augmented reality. This is something that has been growing a lot in the past years and it has been used in some fields specifically. If you think about gaming, that has been a place where it has been used a lot. But in other industries, it has been also very important and very useful. Industries such as, for example, construction or medicine or healthcare. There, they have been also very important to actually be able to overlay those images into the real world. So you had to take a look into how augmented reality could potentially benefit your customers if you are building something that it's working on the street. It's like, yeah, we had Google Lens, which didn't go that far, but maybe there are good solutions that could be implemented nowadays that could help you be in one place and by using some AR device, be able to locate the, I don't know, your favorite type of stores. So AR definitely is something that has been coming for many years now, but something that probably is going to get, be getting more traction on the future. So what do you think about the, these technologies? Are you using them already? Let us know in the comments below, which ones are you using? Which ones might you, you might be considering to use in the future? And if you have a new technology that, that you think that I haven't mentioned in this video, please let us know in the comments below. If you like the video, Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next one. And remember, stay safe.